What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you how to create this amazing family that's going to save you so much time when designing a floor plan layout in Revit. So here I've got a floor plan and this is just one of the, a floor plan from my latest course but later, more on that a bit later. But here when you're designing a layout, you have to have some sort of storage, some sort of shelves, cabinets, a countertop, stuff like that. So you need some storage elements here. And usually storage elements should fit in these like uh, niches. So here in the wall, I want to fit between these two walls something. Here I want to fit something else. So you want these storage elements to be able to kind of adapt to my uh, floor plan layout and usually it's hard to find a family online that fits there and then you have to measure it and then address the parameters and it's always a hassle so today I'm going to be showing you how to create this amazing family that when I go to component here we have this storage and we just pick two points pick two points here and there we go we've got two storage families that are perfectly fitting inside of this also, I can place one over here and it goes all the way up to the door. So it's super easy. It's just two clicks and we have our storage family. Of course, it's fully parametric. So here for the width, we can make it smaller. Maybe this should be uh, 40 centimeters. So there we go. It's a bit smaller. And also for the height, maybe I want it to be a bit lower. So let's do one meter or 100 centimeters. There we go. We have that one. And for this one, let's leave it at 60, but maybe it should be higher. This is for clothing and stuff like that. So let's do this at 200 centimeters hit apply there we go so it's super simple it's super easy to adjust and it's just two clicks and it fits anywhere you want so I'm going to be showing you how to create something like this and actually because here I've got this kind of storage I want to do the same thing as some sort of kitchen countertop so here for the kitchen I you always want your kitchen to fit in a certain space so I'm going to be showing you how to create a parametric line based uh, kitchen element or kitchen countertop family that works the same way as this uh, this storage or cabinets or stuff like that. But before I get into that tutorial, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial. It helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. Also, one more thing, if you want to check out how to create this uh, floor plan and actually this whole house that they have here, I've created a a beginner's course for Revit where this is the first first part where I show you how to create this out of nothing and we created this floor plan layout and then I'm going to be doing more courses in the future so on my patreon first link in the description I've got some advanced one hour Revit courses I've got like 13 so far and I'm uploading one each week. Also, if you want to get access to these uh, these storage families as well as all of my Revit project files, so over two or three hundred files so far, and I'm uploading new files each week. Again, as I said, check out my Patreon first link in the description. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the actual tutorial. So I'm just going to go here to File New and start a new family. Now this is going to be that storage countertop family. So I'm just going to scroll down over here and find the metric model line based. So metric generic model line based, that's the one that you want to use. And if you're using Imperial, feel free to use Imperial if that's what, what you use in your country. Now let's open this up and this is what you're going to get. So you've got some uh, elements over here. So we've got this reference plane over here. We've got this length parameter. So this is basically the first click and the second click. So first link is here where the family begins and the second click is here where the family ends and you can stretch it all you want. And this is a parameter that you're not going to be able to change uh, in the parameters. It's what you change by clicking on the screen or uh, just by dragging the family. If you want to adjust it, you get this little pick point and then you can adjust it. So there we go. Let's go back to the family and now let's start modeling. So what we need to do, we need to add a more, a bit more functionality. So I'm just going to go here to the create tab and go to the reference plane. Alternatively, you can use the RP shortcut for reference plane and let's place one over here. Now this reference plane, I'm going to add a parameter that's going to allow me to control uh, the depth or the, the thickness of my cabinet. So in this case, uh, in this house here, we have this width parameter that's 40. So I'm just going to use that one. So let's go over here, select this and let's make it a parameter. So let's make it an instance parameter so you can change it and make it different for each instance. And let's make it a width parameter. Okay. 
just click OK and there we go. And now if I go over here, I can change that if I want to put maybe 600, hit apply. OK, here we have a problem. It moved it in a wrong way. So how do you fix that? Well, let's cancel out of that. Let's go back and I'm actually going to delete this. And now for the second one, go here and just make an aligned dimension or use the shortcut DI. You don't want to have that mistake. So you go first from this reference plane, then to this reference plane, and then you place it, the dimension. Hit escape a couple of times, select it. And now because we already have the parameter, let's just make it this parameter. Now let's try flexing it again. So let's try making this 600, hit apply, and there we go. It moved this reference plane. That's what you want to have. So the first click should always be on the middle one and the second on this one over here. Okay, so once we have that in place, let's just create another parameter for the height. So just go here to the front, and here, uh, what I like to do is just select this level and maybe move it out of the way a bit. There we go. Again, go back to create reference plane or RP is the shortcut. There we go. Now, again, DI for dimension. Go from the level all the way up here and create this as a parameter. So this is going to be height. And again, make it an instance parameter. Hit OK. There we go. And I'm just going to make it one meter usually countertops are at one meter. So just hit apply. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So the first thing about this family that we need to create is the actual countertop. I like to start from there. So just go here to create extrusion, go with a regular extrusion. And here for the reference plane, what they like to do is go to set. I go with pick a plane, go okay. And then try to pick point this here reference plane. This is the reference plane of the reference line. So that's the best positioning for this thing. So you want it to be attached to that little line that's representing that little line for the line based family that's going to be stretched when you place it with those two clicks. So you go a rectangular family from here to here. And what I like to do immediately is just lock everything in place. And for this one, uh, this I like to go with DI again dimension go from the top to the bottom so you always go from the reference plane down to the uh, pink line and let's make this 60 millimeters and let's lock that one in place so you just go back you hit finish and you go to your reference level and I just like to attach it to this one lock it in place so it moves with the width parameter that's the important part Okay, with that in place, I'm just going to se select it and let's add a material immediately. So I'm going to go here and find some stone materials. Okay, here we have marble and a marble kitchen countertop is, of course, the pinnacle of luxury of any house. So I'm going to go with that one. Okay, so we've got that in place. Let's go back to the front. Okay, so now let's go to create and again, let's create another extrusion. So go here extrusion and let's go with a rectangle and a rectangle should go from here to here and just lock it in place on the bottom sides and the sides and not on the top. I'm not going to lock it on the top and give it an offset of something like 20 millimeters. That's just what I choose. You can choose maybe something different and there we go. I'm just going to select this and delete it. Go with SL or split element and split it here. And then using trim and extend, I'm going to trim and extend this and trim and extend that. There we go. And now let's just lock this in place and you can lock it just like this. You move it out of the way and then you connect it again and then it's locked in place. And again, and there we go. So this is like the bottom construction of this uh, kitchen element. And you just go with finish, go into reference level. And here you might be tempted to attach it to the same one, but actually we want to have those cabinet doors. So it shouldn't go all the way to the end. So what I like to do in this case is to go to create, go with reference plane. And now with the reference plane, let's create a reference plane over here, just like that. Okay, now go with DI or dimension uh, from here to here. And Let's lock it at 25 millimeters. So just do 25, select it and lock it in place. So this should always be locked at 25. And now we can attach this to that and lock it in place. Okay, so we've got that thing. So as you can see, it looks kind of like this. And now we can select this and let's add some wood materials. So let's go with wood. And I, of course, always do birch wood because that's for some reason my favorite color of wood. So let's go with that one. And there we go. And now again, if we go here and change the width to something like 400, 
hit apply as you can see that distance here that gap is going to stay the same and that's what you want to have okay uh, let's go back to front or now let's go to reference level and let's select this reference uh, line or reference plane and let's name it and I'm just going to name it uh, name okay <laughs> you just want to have some name doesn't matter what it is you just want to have a name and re remember it go to the front elevation and now I'm just going to go here to create extrusion and I go to set work plane and here let's set it to that name work plane there we go okay and let's go with a rectangle and I'll just do a rectangle just like this and again attach it to all bottom sides so the sides and the bottom and not on top and on top I'm going to go with DI DI there we go and dimension okay there we go and this one should be at 75 so it's just five millimeters from here or no that's 15 sorry let's go with 65 there we go looks better a tighter gap and let's lock it in place so this will represent just the doors of the cabinet and for the extrusion end, I'm going to go with 20 millimeters hit apply hit OK hit finish go to reference level and there we go so it's going from the name it's going out 20 millimeters and there it stops and now if we go into 3d there we go looks perfect and now we can select this and maybe change the uh, change the material so go to material and let's go with birch wood as well and let's let's uh, test this out so let's go here with uh, 600 there we go hit apply and it flexes perfectly uh, we can also go here and maybe change this distance a bit go into 3d yeah works perfectly now let me just save this on my desktop and let's call it uh, kitchen storage okay let's pretend I spelled that correctly and let's load it into the project and let's try it out so here I've got some storage let's delete this one go into architecture component and let's see how it works so there we go looks perfect and there we go we have our storage and currently it's set at 60 at what and 100 for the width and height and that's usually what they prefer for kitchen elements but of course you can change it if you want but there you go it works and it works perfectly and it fits into this little place where we want to fit it and if we want to make some adjustments we can always do that by dragging these endpoints so there you go if you want to download this family as well as the storage family that I used over here go to my patreon first link in the description of this video you can download these files and if you join at the Balkan architect advanced courses tier you can see how I designed this house and later on you can catch up on uh, tutorial on courses where I show you how to take this from this initial design phase all the way through to construction and also I've got a bunch of other courses that you can check out as well okay so that's pretty much it for this quick tutorial thank you for watching please subscribe like and share this video and if you have any questions comments or suggestions for any other future tutorials please leave them in the comment section below thank you for watching and have a nice day